A lot of people have been asking me in conversations and everything. A lot of people have been asking me, what do I feel about this whole Lizzo situation in, uh, in the basketball game and everything? Everybody keeps asking me, hey, how you feel about this Lizzo situation? Do you think she's wrong? Uh, uh, uh. Let me tell you something. I don't know Lizzo. We under the same label. We don't have each other's number. We never, like, talk like that with each other and everything. I don't know her like that. You know, like I said, everybody knows me. I don't really have friends in the music industry. But I met her a couple of times, and I really like her attitude. Like, I just don't feel like she comes off as fake or she comes off as she want to be cool with you or, like, hey, like, she's, like, starstruck because, like, you're, like, a celebrity or anything. I just feel like the giggly self that she is online that that's just really her and that makes me like her you know what i'm saying like that that makes me that makes me like her and that makes me want to root for her you know what i'm saying so you know like that whole basketball game thing you know yes it was a little bit too much i personally wouldn't do it but there's the thing there's people like Lizzo and there's people like me that we are just sometimes a little bit extra and sometimes we gotta learn when we're doing too much sometimes we don't realize when we're doing too much like me the instagram live and i had to do that but i'm so extra that sometimes i don't know my limits and sometimes i talk too much and i say too much because i'm too open or um me i be naked a lot of times because i used to be a stripper so i'm just such a free spirited person that sometimes i don't you know since i'm so extra i don't know when um you know when you do too much and sometimes you you just you just learn but it's like while we learning like for example like when i learn or like while she's learning when she do something wrong she don't gotta get dragged for it like she don't gotta get enough for it like it's like it's 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 not, it's enough that people are dragging for her for doing something that was, like, too much. But it's, like, body shaming her continuously, body, 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 body shaming her and chewing her up. I don't like that. I don't like that. That's bullying. And I don't like when people bully celebrities because when I used to get bullied all the time, like, I literally just felt like I was dead, but I was living. Like, I just was so depressed all the time. I I just, I, and it's like, you know, like, I used to come to my grandmother's house so I could make myself feel better, and that wasn't even working for me. I was just so depressed, and I don't like, uh, me knowing that another artist or another person is going through that. So it's just like, people just need to calm down. People do fucked up, <laughs> dumb shit all the time. I do dumb shit all the time. I get dragged every week all the time. To the point that I practically got used to it. Like, I just got used to it. I deleted my Twitter. And that's just that. But, um, you know, I don't like that shit. And then my thing is that it's like, you know, people have asked me, how do I feel about, like, Lizzo being categorized as a female rapper? I honestly don't mind it because I don't mind it. Spaghetti and meatballs? You what? You guys got Chef Wardy? McDonald's is like five blocks away. We're tired of eating fucking coca sandwiches. Like, all right, you could get a co I could literally call the bodega because, oh, yeah, the bodegas around here, they deliver. I could call the bodega right now, but I'm fucking tired of eating a coca sandwich. I ate a coca sandwich for breakfast. Do you have the coca sa sandwich uh, wrapped or you threw it away? I threw it away. Yeah, like, I ate, a, I ate a ham and cheese coca sandwich for breakfast. Like, I uh, fucking ate one um, two days, like, like uh, last night. Like, it's like, I'm tired of it. But it's like, what am I supposed to do? Nephew, you're going to do me the Chef Boy Ardizzi? Yay. Boy, I said the chef. You sound yes, like my the chef. You sound like the baby. Like the baby? Oh, like my daughter? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah so like i was talking right like i was saying so i was talking to some music industry people and you know they were talking about um you know uh lizzo being categorized as a female rapper but the thing is that 
Just like they did to Lil Nas, Lil Nas was a little bit more public about how they didn't want him to be categorized as a country artist because he was black. They don't want to categorize Lizzo as a black, uh, as a pop star because she's black and because her image. And it, it, they have, they've been making it really hard for her to be categorized uh, be, uh, for that. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying it as correctly as the person in the industry was saying it, but it makes sense. No, they don't want no, a black woman that look like Lizzo compete with the other pop star girls. So when people be like, oh, it's so sad when I be seeing people, uh, Lizzo own people talking shit about her because she's a female rapper, I, 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 when, when y'all don't really know the truth about that shit, it's like, it's so sad because... They don't want to categorize her as a as, as a certain type of artist because her look, her image, her color, and they don't want her to compete with the other girls. With the other girls. So people be dragging her, but they don't really be knowing the real facts. And I don't like that. That's why y'all really need to stop dragging people. Y'all be wanting people like, oh, we want our people to win. We want people to win. We want people to win. No, y'all really selective on who y'all really want to win. That girl minds her business. Don't be in motherfucking trouble. Mind her business. Don't be in trouble. Shows love to everybody. Work, work, work. And for some reason, y'all don't like her. That's dead wrong. And I'm not fucking defending people because I'm, I'm cool with them. This and that, like I said. I barely know her. I met her a couple of times. The couple of times I met her, I think that she was very fucking sweet. Um, I don't really have a relationship with her. Uh, nothing. But I just don't like that bullying shit because I know how that shit breaks you down. Especially when you're a fucking new artist. That shit will drive you crazy. And it really hurts my heart to see somebody fucking crying on live because of the constant bullying. I don't like that shit. Let me look at some fucking comments. Are you are you cooking it in the forget it? <laughs> you ever put this in the microwave? <laughs> no. Not because that smells like the pot, and I'm like, are you cooking it in the pot or in the? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, and the pot is better. You know what I'm saying? It's better. It's way better. You, See what these comments are saying. Everybody keeps saying free motherfucking party. What the hell? I got a new charge or something? Y'all scaring me. Somebody said, do you know Shata Wal? Yes, I do know him. The guy, um, the Ghanian artist. Yes. Um, before I even came, before I even went to Africa, um, I have, I have, um, uh, Ghanian friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, my, I don't know, back in the days, I, I don't know if y'all used to see that I used to do my hair all the time, braided, braided, braided. Um, my, my hairstylist, she was like a Ghanian lady. She was, she's the same age around Jenny, my, my new stylist. And she used to treat me like if I was her kid and everything. She used to be like, stop cursing. You need to stop cursing. That's bad. That's really rude. And uh, she's Ghanian and everything. And before I even went to Ghana, I was talking to her. She told me about... Shots at Wale, and she started playing the music and shit. Oh yeah. She said he's like the biggest um Ghanian artist. Oh my god! Oh, you, all right, so let me tell you guys something, right? I've been going through it. Good. Because, guys, let me tell you something. So I'll put this fucking nose ring in, and I'll say I have, like, three or four months with it. And me and Offset have been trying to take this shit off forever because they screw it on so tight. I just want to take it off. Like, this shit is annoying, and, and it fucking, like, I just can't. Like, it just, it got so much makeup on. I think it's too long. Sometimes it looks like it's a piece of shit in my nose. Just want to take it off already. Ugh. Wanna take this shit off? I'm home. I can't. How? I to I just said how. They screw it on. They just 
on it. They screw it. I swear. I gotta go to a, a piercing place to take it off, but I don't got the. Huh? Lizzo joins us at the table. Welcome, we, Lizzo. We love that little tiny purse moment. And you just said, you know I like to have fun, Gail. Well, guess what? We like to have fun, too. Anthony, will you do the honor since you're sitting so close Wait, to her? We thought you needed a little cup to go along with your little purse. <laughs> That's a CBS This oh Morning God. mini cup. Yeah. And we got one, too. Yes. Yeah, we There's eight ounces of coffee in here. How do you do that? <laughs> Cheers. 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 Toast to you. Toast to oh you, Lizzo. You guys make life so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So eight Grammy nominations, you said it feels special. It does. That it feels like infinity. You couldn't have possibly dreamed this for yourself. Not in my year ago. wildest Because people should know, you've been working at this for a very long time. Yes. I mean, I've been I've been a successful musician, a touring musician for a long time. Yeah. I was an indie artist. I had my own label. I got signed to an imprint in Atlantic, and I was good. Uh -huh. I was like, this is great. I'm a career musician. Yeah. I have a fan base. I'm selling out tours. I'm good. My would, wildest dreams have been realized. You would have been happy with that. Happy with that. So then, how would you describe what happened? Um, it's this thing that we always talk about, because um, you need a few things to have success. It's like, of course, there's the talent, there's the drive, the work yes. ethic, but there's this X factor that nobody quite can put their finger on, and we always talked about it, like that weird thing, that magic that happens in someone's career. That is what happened. There was just a moment where somehow, as culture ebbed and flowed, I caught onto that wave and everyone just connected with me like you can never really choose when that moment comes but it's your attitude too and your outsized personality too don't you think i got a big old personality <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so i mean looking at you now it is very hard to believe that at one point before you were a successful touring mu musician before you were a big mainstream success you were living in your car playing music for food is that true <laughs> So, so, so how did you? So how did you get yeah. out of that? And yeah. for the person who's probably watching this on their phone, catching Wi-Fi from the donut shop across the street in their car right now, right, like, right. how do you get through that? moment yeah. to not to where you are today well, that's the key word like through the only way you get through something is to move forward yeah. and i think that i had so many moments where i wanted to give up and i was like why am i still doing this this is so hard you want to give but up I, oh did you? twice in my life what did you say what, what did you tell yourself um I, well the first time i said you know i'm doing